Now some sad news. The Everton chairman, Bill Kenwright, has died at the age of 78. A board member since 1989, he became the majority shareholder in 2004, leading the club in tandem with a successful career as a theatre and film producer. Let's get some more on this. We can join our reporter, Peter Stevenson, who's at Goodison Park. Peter, very good evening. Um, has the club confirmed the news? Yeah, they have, Mike, in the last few minutes, and it really confirms what's been a really dreadful month of October for football in the North West. We lost Francis Lee at Manchester City, Sir Bobby Charlton, of course, at the weekend, and now Bill Kenwright, sort of uh, almost part of the fabric at Everton uh, for more than 20 years. And a brief statement from the club saying that they are in mourning uh, following the death of Chairman Bill Kenwright. They say that he passed away peacefully last night at the age of 78, surrounded by his family and his loved ones. I'm sure we'll get much more detail in a prepared statement uh, a little later uh, this evening from Everton but it's been a really turbulent time for Bill Kenwright. I mean, he came into this job uh, knowing that Everton needed uh, investment in the squad in, and they needed a move to a new stadium. And how ironic that, and how sad that he's passed away and won't see Everton move to their, uh, their new home at, uh, at the Brownlee Moor Dock, uh, just uh, a couple of miles away from here at Goodison Park. But I was here in January when Ken Wright and all the other directors were advised that they, they shouldn't come to games anymore at Goodison Park for their own safety. That was a measure of the, the top atmosphere that's been building up for many, many months. And really, you have to say, uh, ever since the, the David Moyes era, Everton have really been struggling. They haven't won a trophy since the FA Cup in 1995. That's a 28-year period, made worse, of course, by the fact that over in Stanley, across Stanley Park, have been winning the Champions League and the Premier League. So at the moment, Everton, I'm sure, in mourning. A lot of people maybe would feel Bill would have been better leaving his post as chairman a couple of years ago, if only for the sake of his own health. But he wanted to stay, he wanted to guide the club on. Uh, by all accounts, there were reports that he'd had surgery about six weeks ago and had been very, very seriously ill. But now confirmation that, uh, as I say, with that move to the new home, not too far away, very, very sadly, Bill Kenwright has passed away last night. Peter Stevenson, uh, live from Goodison. Thank you, Peter. Well, our senior reporter, Rob Dorset, has joined me in the studio. Rob, hello to you. Um, now, we've mentioned that Bill Kenwright was successful outside of football, so tell us more. Yeah, hugely successful outside of football. I mean, you and I know him as somebody synonymous with Goodison Park, where Peter Stevenson is tonight, for three decades, Mike. Um, but actually, a lot of people outside of the world of football knew him as a, as a famous actor, a very successful actor. He was in Coronation Street. My parents and your parents probably remember him in Z Cars back then, which was a massive hit. Used to get tens of millions of, of people watching it uh, on a weekend. An iconic 60s TV show. And he did the unthinkable thing of walking away from Coronation Street. No actor back then would do that. But he decided he had bigger fish to fry uh, and went on to become this hugely successful theatre producer. That's where he made his millions in TV and, and theatre production. And you look at some of the... The, the shows that he produced on the West End, Blood Brothers, Joseph and the Amazing Technical, A Dreamcoat, Evita, West Side Story, some huge shows that are still around now and synonymous with that part of London. He was awarded the CBE in January 2001 in the, in the Queen's January uh, New Year's Honours list as recognition for all that he'd done in the arts. And so, yeah, he had this huge, very successful, glamorous life outside of football that you and I and a lot of our viewers perhaps don't remember or, or weren't aware of because he was so synonymous with Everton. But he had this dual life um, and, and was successful in, in, in almost every field that he worked in. So how did he get involved with Everton then? Well, he'd been an Everton fan since birth, really. It was in the family and, and, um, and, and he, he was born in with the Wavertree area of, of Liverpool. Um, and he'd been involved with Everton for years. 1989 was when he first came onto the Everton board. That's a long time ago. But he actually took over the club with that 68% share that he bought in 1999, chairman in 2004. And back then, when he took over, he was seen as a saviour by Everton fans because there were a lot of financial troubles, which we're seeing similar at the club now in recent times. They were there back then. And he made some hugely popular decisions as well. He brought Duncan Ferguson back to the football club. He gave Wayne Rooney his first contract controversially. He then sold Wayne Rooney to Manchester United. A lot of fans didn't like that, but that was the financial reality he felt he was facing back then. Um, and he had this very successful time with Everton. Probably the highlight was 2005, I think, when 
<laughs> we got some pictures of him celebrating in the back garden with champagne and um, he was celebrating Everton being in the Champions League. There he is, look, with the family. What a moment it was for them under the stewardship of David Moyes in the team. So there were some really successful times, um, but some more difficult times of late. And Peter Stevenson referred to one of them there. The f one, I think one of the saddest things for Bill Kemmerer and his family was that in the last six months, seven months or so, he hasn't been able to visit Goodison Park because those safety advisers advised him and every other member of the Everton board to stay away. I think that hit him and the family very, very hard. In fact, Ken Wright wrote to some of the Everton fans and said, this is one, one of the saddest things for me, that I can't be there with you. I don't think anybody doubted his affiliation, his love, his, his huge support of Everton Football Club. Yeah, so on that note, he feels like, like the last of the old-time chairman, the fan chairman. Yeah, yeah. So what will his legacy be then? I think that's for others to decide, and I think we'll hear from lots of former Everton players and, and Everton supporters over the coming hours and days, Mike. But he would have loved his, his legacy to have been seeing Everton with new owners resplendent in their new stadium in Bramley Moor Dock, and, and unfortunately he won't be around to see that. Of course, 777, the new owners in waiting, will hopefully take them there and, and continue that legacy. Um, Ken Wright tried three times to build a new stadium for Everton and, and, and didn't manage to get that through. Um, but I'm told, if we can switch to football for just a moment, that his passing will have no impact on that takeover from 777. They're still waiting for approval from the Premier League, the FA and the Financial Conduct Authority. There were some concerns over the delays there, but 777 have written an open letter saying, no, this is just regulatory, everything's going according to plan. And I think you need to point out that Ken Wright wasn't directly involved in those negotiations because at this stage in his life, he only had a very small stake in the football club. This was Farshad Mashiri who was dealing with the negotiations with the potential new owners. Um, so it's difficult to establish what his legacy is. That will perhaps become clearer over the coming hours and days. But I think... The, the, the overriding thing is his love for Everton Football Club. He devoted his life to it. He is synonymous with Everton Football Club. Um, a man whose blood ran true blue. Beyond that, a very famous actor, brilliant theatre producer. Um, and he navigated Everton through some pretty choppy times and had some good times that the Everton fans will remember. And I don't think probably anybody could doubt anything especially his love and commitment for, for Everton Football Club, which lasted over three decades. It certainly did. Rob Dorsett, our senior reporter, thank you very much for putting some context around Rob Dorsett, around Bill Kenwright.